Welcome, dear friends. In today's topic, we are going to learn about Bernoulli's theorem and energy losses during the flow of fluids. What is the ob objective of this particular video? That the students will learn about Bernoulli's theorem. How do we der derive the Bernoulli's equation and what are its applications? The students will be able to explain the energy losses during fluid flow. So Bernoulli's theorem, uh, it based on the law of principle of conservation of energy. Okay, so whenever a fluid is in motion, it is subjected to several forces, which result in variation of the acceleration and energies in the flow phenomenon. So when the principles of law of conservation of energy is applied to the flow of the fluid, the resulting equation is called as the Bernoulli's theorem or Bernoulli's equation. The pumps, they help to convey the liquids from one point to another. So you have to consider a pump which is working under isothermal conditions between points A and points B as shown in the diagram, okay? Now consider that this is a pipe and uh, point one is located here and point B is located here, okay? Now, a pump is working here. Why the pump is working? To convey the liquid at point A to point B, okay? So now what we are saying, the liquid is moving from point A to point B with the help of a pump, okay? So now, when, suppose one kg of liquid is at this point, it is entering at point A, Okay, so that one kg of liquid, it is going to possess some kind of energy. Okay, so that liquid, it is going to have three types of energy. The first is kinetic energy. Uh, then it has got potential energy and it has got pressure energy. Okay, now when the same liquid, when it moves through this whole length of the pipe and it comes or it leaves the system at point P, at that time also, it will have that same set of energy that will that is it will consist of potential energy pressure energy and kinetic energy okay now what we are saying in bernoulli's theorem we we consider that whenever a fluid is moving okay in a system we say that the law of conservation of energy it is applied or it always acts here okay so from this we can say the point the energy point a of that particular liquid it will be exactly equal to the energy at point b right okay so <clears throat> uh, so now we will see how the energies are given okay so uh, first we will see what is the uh, statement of bernoulli's theorem uh, bernoulli's theorem it is nothing but it in a steady state or ideal flow of an incompressible fluid the total energy per unit mass, which consists of pressure energy, kinetic energy, and datum energy. Now, what is a datum energy? It is nothing but the name for potential energy, okay? At any point of the fluid is constant, okay? So, at point A, suppose one kg of the liquid is assumed to enter. At this point, the liquid is going to experience all three types of energies, pressure energy, kinetic energy, and potential energy, okay? Now we will obtain um, these all type of energies by these equations, by equations, okay? So since the liquid is flowing under pressure, pressure energy in joules, it can be written as pressure energy is equal to PA upon G into rho A, okay? Where P is the pressure at point A, G is the acceleration due to gravity, and rho A is nothing but the density of the liquid, okay? So the potential energy or the datum energy of the body is defined as energy possessed by the body by the virtue of its position or its configuration, okay? So point A is considered to be at height of XA meters above the horizontal datum plane. So the potential energy for one kilogram of liquid, it can be written as potential energy is equal to XA, okay? Now, the kinetic energy of a body is the energy which is possessed by that body by virtue of its motion, okay? So, uh, as the fluid is in motion, it will have some amount of kinetic energy and it is designated as mu A meters per second 
at point A and it is expressed as kinetic energy is equal to mu A square by 2G. Okay. So the total energy as point A, it is the sum of all the three energies. That is, we can write uh, total energy at point A as pressure energy plus potential energy plus kinetic energy. Right. So now we will substitute the equations over here. So we will write total energy at point A is equal to PA by 0A plus XA plus mu A square by 2G. Okay. Now um, uh, we know that according to Bernoulli's theorem, okay, the total energy at point A is constant. So we will write this equation as constant. Okay. So after the system, it reaches steady state. Whenever one kg of liquid enters at point A, another one kg of the liquid is leaving the system at point B. Okay. So now we will write um, the energy content of one kg of liquid that is being uh, leaving the system at point B, it, B. It is written as total energy at point B is equal to PB upon G rho B plus XB plus mu B square by 2G. Okay. Now it is nothing but this is the pressure energy, this is the potential energy and this is the kinetic energy which is possessed by that liquid at point B. Okay, now here also we are going to apply the um, law of conservation of energy and hence we say that point, uh, the energy at point B is constant. Okay, so if there is no loss or there is no gain, then principle of conservation of energy at two points, it can be applied as input is equal to output. Okay, so total energy at point A is equal to total energy at point B. Okay, so we will write the two equations. Now, um, Theoretically, all kinds of energies involved in the fluid flow, they have to be accounted, okay? What we had said earlier that we are using a pump to carry the fluid, okay? So, uh, during the transportation of the fluid, pump has added certain amount of energy. That energy added by the pump is written as W plus W. Why plus sign is given? Because that much amount of energy is being added by that pump. Okay, so it is plus W and J is the joule, stands for joule, it is the unit. Okay, so during the transport, some energy is converted to heat due to frictional forces. Okay, so due to friction, the energy loss, it can be written as minus F. Now, why minus, minus sign is given? Because that much amount of energy is lost. Okay, so um, if we write, if we consider these two terms in the earlier written equation, then we will get this as the final equation for Bernoulli's theorem. Okay, this is the total energy at point A minus F, okay, minus the frictional loss plus W plus how much amount of energy we have given is equal to uh, the total energy at point B. Okay, so this is the equation for Bernoulli's theorem. Now, what is the application of Bernoulli's theorem? It is used in the measurement of rate of fluid flow using orifice meter or venturi meter. It is applied in the working of centrifugal pump in this kinetic energy is converted into pressure head, which help in pumping the liquids. And the third application is it is easy to measure the heights and apply them as energy terms, which is a contribution of the Bernoulli's theorem. Okay, now we will make, move to the next concept of energy losses. Okay, so According to the law of conservation of energy, energy balance, it has to be properly accounted, okay? So it is important to calculate the energy losses. The fluids, when they flow, they experience energy losses in several ways while flowing through the pipes, okay? Now, what are these types of energy losses? One is frictional loss, second is losses in the fittings, and third is enlargement losses, okay? Fourth type of loss is contraction losses. Now, um, there is a slight difference between enlargement losses and contraction losses, okay, that we, we are going to see. So what are frictional losses? During the flow of the fluids, frictional forces, they cause a loss in the pressure, okay? Uh, that loss in the pressure is uh, given in terms of pascals, okay? So the fluid flow, it can be either viscous or it can be turbulent and which also causes losses. So in general, the pressure drop will be directly proportional to the velocity. It will be directly proportional to the density. 
it will be directly proportional to the length of the pipe and it is going to be inversely proportional to the diameter of the pipe okay so these relationships they are proposed in the fanning's equation okay now why fanning's equation is used it is used to calculate the friction losses okay so the fanning equation it is written as delta pf is equal to 2f mu square into l rho d okay so here f is nothing but it is the frictional factor and delta pf is the pressure drop the value of the f it depends on the nature of the fluid flow if it is turbulent or viscous and it also depends on the roughness of the inner surface of the pipe okay so for viscous pr uh, flow pressure drop is given by hagen poiseuille's equation uh, and using this equation we can calculate the pressure drop due to friction friction okay so in hagen poiseuille's equation we can write delta p is equal to 32 l n and uh, viscosity of the fluid by d square right now next is the losses in the fittings the fanning equation is applicable for losses in the straight pipe okay so when fittings are introduced uh, uh, we have to consider the losses due to those fitting fittings as well but we have to uh, convert the losses of the fittings in terms of a straight pipe okay so uh, this fittings they cause disturbance in the flow and this disturbance it results in um, additional loss of the energy in fitting okay and um, it occurs due to uh, change in the direction uh, change in the type of the fitting okay for example this is a t type of fitting which has equivalent length of 90 and this is globe valve equivalent uh, globe valve which has equivalent le length of 300 okay so losses in the fittings it is expressed in terms of equivalent length of straight pipe so equivalent length of fitting is equal to equivalent length into internal diameter flow for globe valve we can write it as 300 into 50 is equal to 15 meters so what we are concluding here that if we introduce a globe valve then what will happen uh, this globe wall is going to cause energy loss that will be exactly equal to the energy losses caused by 15 meters of the straight pipe okay so uh, the uh, this means that the globe wall is equal to 15 meters of straight line so this length is substituted in the fanning's equation okay so uh, the next type of energy loss is enlargement losses the loss is enlargement loss okay so if the cross section of the pipe enlarges gradually the fluid adapts itself to the changed section without any disturbance okay now see if you can observe in this figure the change um, from this narrow portion to the enlarged portion is gradual okay so the fluid itself is going to adapt to this uh, changed shape okay so there will occur no loss of energy at this point but if the cross section of the pipe changes suddenly, then the loss in the energy observed is uh, high due to eddies. Okay, so now look if this is this type of sharp uh, change occurs in the shape, then what will happen? Uh, the when the fluid it will move from this point to this point, um, the velocity will decrease, and uh, due to this type of shape, there will occur eddies. Okay, and uh, there occurs loss loss of energy okay so there is greater uh, so these are the greater at this point than at the straight line pipe so in sudden enlargements the velocity of the flow at larger cross section is less than the velocity at the smaller cross section okay so we can say mu2 is less than mu1 for sudden enlargement the losses can be written as delta h e that is loss of head due to sudden enlargement is equal to mu1 minus mu2 square by 2g okay then last type of loss is the contraction losses so if the cross section of the pipe is reduced suddenly the fluid flow is disturbed the diameter of the fluid stream is less than the initial value of the diameter and this point of minimum cross section is known as the vena contractor okay now you can see here initially the flow the fluid is flowing through this uh, section which is enlarged 
and afterwards when it enters here it has to move from a smaller cross section okay so the velocity at this point is less as compared to the velocity at this point okay so velocity of the fluid at smaller cross section will be greater than the velocity at larger cross section so we will say that mu2 is greater than mu1 okay and in this case mu1 can be neglected so uh, contraction losses they can be expressed as sudden contraction losses that is delta hc is equal to k mu2 square by 2g in this case k is a constant delta hc stands for loss in head due to sudden contraction and mu2 is the velocity okay so um, so this was uh, so next is measurement of rate of flow of fluids okay so whenever a fluid uh, it moves in any type of process it is necessary to measure the rate at which the fluid is going to move through the pipe okay so it is required for the process optimization audit costing etc the methods can be classified as a direct weighing method or a direct measurement method next is hydrodynamic methods uh, it includes orifice meter venturi meter pitot tube and rotameter okay so um, this we will see in the next uh, video uh, thank you for watching